These buildings are shaking for a reason. If you pay attention, all of them are made of wood. But this is not just another wood harvested from the forest. There is engineering behind it. It is known as mass timber. Mass timber has brought a new revolution to the construction industry and has the potential to replace the traditional building materials, such as concrete, bricks, and cement. Now, we can build several story tall buildings with it. It is lighter in weight, as hard as steel, and can sustain severe wear and tear. But what is mass timber? How do factories process it? What can we accomplish with this engineered wood? All this and much more, you are going to watch in this video. A common question about mass timber is, what kind of wood is used in its manufacturing? The answer is, it depends on the manufacturing method. It could be spruce, Scots pine, larch, Douglas fir, or sometimes any kind of wood. There are different methods of manufacturing mass timber, but cross-laminated timber has gained popularity for its strength, sustainability, and versatility in construction. Most of the newly built tall wood buildings have plenty of cross-laminated timber. For example, Ascent MKE is so far the tallest skyscraper made out of wood. It is 284 feet tall with 25 floors and 259 luxury apartments. The first seven floors of this were constructed in the same way that typical tall buildings are. The rest of the floors are made from wood around the concrete structure. This building located in Milwaukee may not hold the title for a long time, as a number of taller buildings are either in development or under planning. Before it, a building in Vienna named Ho Ho Wien had the title. It is 275 feet tall. Mjörstornit was built the same year. It is slightly higher in height than Ho Ho, with a total height of 283 feet. This year, a CBD hotel in Australia will take this title after completion. It is going to be a 328-foot tall building. Without cross-laminated timber, it was impossible to build any of the mentioned wood buildings. Since 2018, a rise in demand for CLT has been noticed, and it's going to take off further. The global cross-laminated timber demand was at 1.4 billion US dollars in 2023. It will reach 3.8 billion US dollars by 2030. Cross-laminated timber, or CLT, is produced by gluing together layers of solid sawn lumber at right angles to each other, forming large panels that can be used for walls, floors, and roofs. Norway spruce is considered the best wood for making CLT. It is lightweight in nature and offers ease of processing. Around 3 billion Norway spruce trees were planted in the USA during the Great Depression. At the Humane Advanced Structure and Composite Center, a team of scientists has been testing these locally grown trees. The tests were conducted to inspect wood characteristics owing to soil and environmental changes. In 2016, they approved the locally grown Norway spruce for use as construction grade lumber. Companies that harvest these trees also plant new seedlings to counter forest depletion. Often, more new seedlings are planted than the number of harvested trees, but a spruce tree takes more than 40 years to reach maturity. It grows to heights of 40 to 60 feet with a spread of around 25 to 30 feet. Its thick part is used to create wood planks, while the thin upper part is used for manufacturing paper pulp. After harvesting spruce trees, they are brought to the sawmill in the form of long logs. First of all, each and every log is inspected and then sorted accordingly. Then, the bark of recommended logs is removed using this machine. Now it's time to cut the logs with saws to give them the correct dimension. 
laser technology is used for this purpose, which offers precise measurement of each and every log. You might have observed smoke emanating from the sawmill. This comes from kilns, which are used to dry the processed wood. The kiln drying process significantly removes the moisture in the wood and improves its properties. The removed bark is also fed to the kiln. Next, the timber is planned to have a specific dimension and a smooth surface. Once the planks are ready, these are sent to another factory, which will transform them into cross-laminated timber. In this production line, the planks are joined together to make wooden panels up to 16 meters in length. This is done by finger jointing. The joint planks are then glued together to make a single layer of panels. A hydraulic press binds them together with compression. Also, eco-friendly adhesives are applied between each layer. A premium outer layer is also added to the outer layer if it is going to be visible. Next, they enter the sanding station to sand down to the desired size. This work is done with precision, so all CLT panels can be easily assembled later. CNC cutting makes this possible. Thanks to advancements in technology, it is now possible to manufacture CLT 100% automatically. Panels are lifted with help of cranes to unload them from trailers and position them straight to where they need to be assembled. CLT panels are made modular for a reason. They have a variety of wood joints that make their installation super easy. First of all, the panels are put in place. These panels have picking eyes for fitting a crane hook to unload and position them from the truck. As CNC machines are employed to create those joints, they perfectly fit in when each panel is placed in its place. Traditionally, workers have to use additional frames for supporting wood panels. For instance, in order to build a roof, workers must join multiple layers of plywood to achieve the required strength. They have to use secondary products to support such a wood building. On the other hand, CLT panels can be ready-made without much need for additional elements. This significantly increases the construction speed. Thanks to advancements in construction technology, it is possible to run simulations in advance and design each CLT panel in digital form before its manufacturing in the factory. A well-planned CLT panel contains pre-drilled holes in it for passing electrical, mechanical, and plumbing systems. However, simply installing multiple CLT panels is insufficient to construct a tall wood building. It must meet certain performance criteria. One of them is echo. You may already know that military personnel break stride over a bridge. The total amount of force generated by all military men can lead to the breaking down of the bridge. This actually happened in 1850, when a battalion of French soldiers marched across the Anger Bridge in France. The bridge collapsed due to the soldiers' rhythmic steps. However, people walking on wooden roofs do not stride. Yet, they walk randomly. This is why manufacturers of CLT ensure that their product is capable of withstanding such forces. Depending on the strength required for the building, a CLT panel can consist of three to nine plies. But no matter how thick the CLT is, it causes acoustic problems when people randomly walk over it. One reason is that wooden structures do not have high acoustic performance at low frequencies. On the contrary, wood has been used for making musical instruments because of its ability to effectively radiate music. To reduce noise transmission, gypsum or perforated wood panels are applied. They can significantly reduce the acoustic noise within CLT structures. Other than adding additional layers, the technique of disconnection is employed. It maintains a gap between the elements, significantly dampening the acoustic noise. Surely, noise can be disturbing in many ways, but it is not the main problem. At least, it does not cost lives 
because wood offers another magnificent property that humans have been benefiting from for thousands of years. It allows us to light fire. When someone mentions a massive wooden structure, people wonder what would happen if it caught fire. About six years ago, researchers from the U.S. Department of Agriculture had the same question in their mind. To find this out, they tested a two-story, full-scale, cross-laminated timber building. It included a single-bedroom apartment with jam-packed furniture and 30% exposed CLT, as well as CLT, covered with gypsum. The fire was ignited in the kitchen, which engulfed everything in the room after some time. After 25 minutes, the fire started to extinguish, but the flames did not reach the hallway. After the burnout, the fire died down on its own. In another test, the CLT was completely exposed to fire. In this test, they also used a sprinkler system to extinguish the fire. The temperature rose to 700 degrees Celsius, but when they activated the sprinkler system after 20 minutes, the temperature cooled down to 50 degrees Celsius in only 60 seconds. These tests prove that CLT, despite being made out of wood, can be fire resistant. Pulte is a construction company that develops various kinds of devices for the buildings, including fire stop devices. Due to the increasing demand for CLT buildings, Hilti began conducting tests on CLT panels provided by various CLT manufacturers. Hilti experts knew installing fire stop devices on various prefabricated devices could be challenging and require additional work. Therefore, they have been developing an innovative solution to cope with such issues. There is another advantage of constructing tall buildings with CLT. These buildings can withstand earthquakes better than any typical concrete structures. The reason is that inertial forces generated by earthquakes increase with the weight of the building but mass timber is lighter in weight compared to concrete. Therefore, earthquakes cause less damage to wood buildings. Furthermore, the grain structure of wood prevents it from becoming brittle, unlike other cement buildings. Instead, its flexibility aims to counteract the effects of earthquakes. Fibers adapt to the movement of the earthquake. Unlike concrete, steel, that's all brittle. It can yield and collapse in an earthquake. A connection system that allows the CLT shear wall to rock can have major advantages over a fixed shear wall. The idea is that under extreme loads, the shear wall will be allowed to lift up on one side and then rock back into place when the load comes off. While cross-laminated timber is the most popular mass timber, there are other types that are equally important. Glue-laminated timber, or glulum, offers more structural strength when it comes to the main structure of any building. It is used as a long wood column and beam in the building. Glulam is produced by connecting layers of wood in parallel, as opposed to bonding wood grain in perpendicular layers, as we have seen in the production of CLT. This configuration gives glulam its strength primarily in one direction, making it ideal for beams and structural applications. Despite their strength, larger glulam panels may be susceptible to warping or cracking if improperly managed during installation. However, glulam can be less expensive to produce per volume compared to CLT due to its simpler lamination process. This is why it is sometimes preferred for aesthetic applications. Glulam can be manufactured in various shapes, such as vaulted roofs and bridges. Nail laminated timber is quite similar to CLT and glulam. Instead of glue, nails are used to attach the wood as a single unit. It is suitable for a variety of structural applications, such as flooring, walls, and roofs. The boards are stacked vertically and attached with a large number of long galvanized nails, adding to the panel's strength and stability. Plywood or oriented strand board sheathing is often used to improve the panel's shear capacity and structural performance. Architects use NLT 
because it can be used to construct monolithic slab panels that meet a varied type of structural and architectural requirements, including as curves and cantilevers. Furthermore, it can be built on site, allowing for customized size and shape. This is especially useful for projects that need custom geometry or modifications during construction. Dowel laminated timber is a unique mass timber product created by stacking lumber boards and linking them with hardwood dowels, hence removing the need for metal fasteners or adhesives. This technology produces big, flexible panels suited for floors, walls, and roofs, with dimensions of up to 3.7 by 18.7 meters. DLT provides benefits such as increased structural efficiency and simplicity of processing with CNC gear. It is gaining popularity in construction because of its environmental advantages and lower cost when compared to other engineered wood products such as cross-laminated timber. Laminated veneer lumber is a high-strength engineered wood product created by gluing thin wood veneers using heat and pressure. LVL was developed in the 1970s and is used for structural applications such as beams, lintels, and trusses, with strength similar to solid wood, concrete, and steel. Its homogeneity and durability prevent warping and shrinking, making it ideal for long spans and high loads. LVL's adaptability allows for a wide range of forms and sizes, making it ideal for usage in contemporary buildings. It is regarded as a cost-effective and sustainable construction material. This year, researchers at the University of Kassel developed a new method to use veneer. With robotics, they are able to wrap thin veneer to create impressive structures. This method will allow them to create high-strength, stable, and lightweight structures. It would be useful for decoration and renovation purposes. Mass timber is increasingly recognized for its potential to mitigate climate change by sequestering carbon and reducing greenhouse gas emissions associated with traditional construction materials like concrete and steel. Proponents argue that mass timber can transform buildings into carbon sinks, potentially sequestering significant amounts of CO2 during their lifespan. However, concerns exist regarding the sustainability of sourcing practices, as unsustainable logging could negate these benefits and harm forest ecosystems. Comprehensive life cycle assessments are needed to fully understand mass timber's environmental impact. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. For such informative videos, subscribe to this channel. We will appreciate it if you leave a like and comment below your thoughts. See you next time.